According to Leonard P. Curry, author of The Free Black in Urban America, 1800 to 1850, more than a third of the black population in cities like Boston lived in blind alleys, cellars, and lofts. Their poor and unsanitary living conditions created rampant health problems and shortened their lifespans. Curry further stated that in 1855, Boston City Register, Dr. Josiah Curtis found that the death rate among blacks was 99 times higher than whites. So, so this means that even black people who live in the North where they were free uh, didn't live that well. They lived very badly. Their lives were pretty, pretty terrible. Um, so uh, let me see here. So today, 150 years later, the mortality, white between, uh, mortality gap excuse me, between whites and blacks has narrowed only a little. Social pathology and inferior living conditions, not genetics, continue to control the life expectancy of blacks. In the mid-1800s, the living conditions for free blacks were so desperate that nearly 50% had no choice but to seek some form of public welfare. In order to survive, large numbers of blacks publicly acknowledged that they were in a helpless state and were incapable of feeding, protecting, sheltering, and educating themselves and their children. Many black families became so desperate that they voluntarily re-entered slavery to survive. Now, let me pause on that for a minute. Did y'all know that? How many of y'all knew that? that? That there were large numbers of black people who said, this is so bad that I want to go back to jail. Like, I want to go back to slavery. Like, I want, like, being a slave is better than being free because at least as a slave, I get to eat something every day, right? I mean, I mean think about that. Like, how bad does your life have to be that you that you want to be a slave again? You want to go back to slavery. I think that's really um, significant. I mean, that's something, and that's not something that you get taught in school, right? You get taught that when, you know, Black people were freed, that being free was always the optimal choice. But sometimes freedom, sometimes freedom can suck when you have no security. If you don't have basic security, then freedom means nothing if you can't eat and you uh, you don't have a safe place to lay your head every night, right? So um, so others turned to public charity, but nearly every black who saw some form of public relief was refused. They were chastised for being uned uneducated and were called lazy and irresponsible for bearing children they could not support. Curry indicates that in Cincinnati, a typical typical northern urban area, out of 3,269 cases in which the city granted relief to the needy, only 10 recipients were black. So they, they helped out 3,200, for every 3,269 people that they helped, they were in poverty, only 10 of them would be black. So black people couldn't even get welfare. They couldn't even get public assistance. Um, and the assistance offered these fortunate black recipients was only for their own burial expenses. So they pretty much said, we'll only help you if you're dead. That's the only bit of, the only way we'll help black people. Now, mind you, this understand that this book, Black Labor, White Wealth, we're reading Black Labor, Black White Wealth by Dr. Claude Anderson. This book is 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 something that um, doesn't just give you what you didn't learn in school, but it also gives you a, the clear case for reparations, right? It, it, it really helped you understand not the fact that, that reparations are called for. We know that, I hope we agree on that, but it goes deeper to say that part of the reason that they're denying you the reparations is, is consistent with their consistent denial of other things that they've denied you for the last two, three, 400 years, right? So their reaction to reparations saying, oh, we're gonna study for seven years, we might get around to it, we might not, or you know, you lazy people need to go pick yourself up by your bootstraps, like all of that, that's a tradition, right? And what's also being said here that's really important is that he's talking about black people that lives in the North. They were hanging out with the liberals. They were hanging out with the allies, right? So if your allies are treating you this bad, um, then, then you really don't have any allies, right? You know, with friends like that, you don't need enemies. 